the secret place I'm dwelling. In the secret place I'm dwelling. Safely. Safely. Ever so bravely. Your foundation foundation standeth sure. Stand sure. Well, I was broken. Hearted. I bowed down. I was shackled. thankful to God for allowing us to be in your presence one more time this morning. Uh, a few announcements and we're going to get right into this thing. The VOX Wave Coat Drive will be, sponsored, will be sponsoring its first annual coat drive. The coats collected will be distributed to various homeless shelters and families in the metro area. Coat drop-off locations are 4711 Off Place, Suitland, Maryland, 20746. For additional information, please contact Frank Dent at 301-442-9258. Coats collected will be donated on February the 25th, uh, which is today, which is the last day of the, the coat drive. So we're hoping that that will be a blessing uh, to everyone that is able to <coughs> donate and to distribute the coats to those that need it. Also, uh, VMX Wave now features streaming radio media play on our website's front page where local artists can get their music played 24 by 7. For more information on getting your music in rotation 
or to perform live at the studio, contact Reg Gaskin at 240-832-4455. Uh, Android users, the VOX Wave app is now available in the Google Play Store. Download the app today on your Android device to listen in and view programs. Business owners, looking for a place to advertise your business or promote your products, uh, products and services, VOX Wave is the right place. We have over 10,000 viewers a day and 70,000 listeners a month. For more information, again, contact Reg Gaskin at 240-832-4455. That concludes all of the announcements. I am truly honored this morning and blessed. Um, we were not with you last week, but we are back uh, to God's grace and his mercy kept us. And we're so thankful to be here. I have the privilege uh, to introduce to you all one of my good friends. Uh, this gentleman can preach, he can teach, a uh, very humble man. Uh, we uh, have had many battles on the basketball court, and uh, he's got the best of me, so I'm, I'm still trying to catch up. <laughs> I think it's like 100 to 10. <laughs> but this is my friend, Reverend Michael Wingard. He's one of the associate pastors <coughs> at the Temple of Praise, uh, who, under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Uh, Bishop Glenn A. Staples, a great man of God, and uh, we're just excited about what God is doing. Uh, my friend, I'm going to turn it over to you. Amen. And Amen. do your thing. Amen. God Amen. bless you, my brother. God bless you, man. Always a pleasure to be in your presence. You know, you, you're just a, a major player in the kingdom of God. You know, not only on the basketball court, but in the pulpit, too. <laughs> And I do want to thank you for this opportunity, oh, you know, to be able to come on on this show Bless and be God. able to share something uh, on this early Saturday morning for those who awoke, awoke up this morning. Uh, uh, there's a word for you to encourage your soul. Amen. Amen. And I want to thank uh, especially our, our father, our spiritual father, Bishop Charity. Yes. And as you mentioned, Bishop Staples, uh, who we love dearly and uh, our coverings and, and pray for us uh, endlessly. Amen. And so we thank God for that. All right, so we, we can go straight into the word. Amen. 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 I, I won't be before you long. Uh, not a long-winded preacher, but I got some good news for those who did decide to wake up early this morning. <clears throat> and I want to start out with uh, the book of Amos, uh, chapter 9, verse 13. <clears throat> and that'd be coming from the Message Bible. Uh, it says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now, which is God's decree. He said, things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once, and everywhere you look, blessings and blessings like wine pouring off the mountains and hills, uh, like everything right again for the people of Israel. And uh, I, I pretty much like that scripture because it, it reminds me of how it is that when you are a prayer warrior mm -hmm. and when you are praying for anything in your life, God's decree, his, his promise is that it won't be long now. If I was in church, I'd tell you, nudge your neighbor and tell him <laughs> it won't be long now. It won't now. be long now. Uh, uh, and see, what you got to understand is, is that you've been praying for some stuff. And you've gotten frustrated because you think that God's not going to answer your prayers. But what you got to understand is it won't be long now. And understand that the immediate blessings are going to come and just overtake you. And you have been waiting a long time. But I want to let you know that your wait is over. Your dreams and your visions that haven't manifested yet, but it won't be long now. And you find yourself stagnant in this place called wait. Uh, this place called wait where we tend to throw in the towel and give up on things. But God wants you to know that the speed of favor is going to overtake your life and it won't be long now. And so sudden shifts are going to happen in your life because of the favor that God has on you. So you got to be bold and go bold to that devil and let that devil know every witch that he has, every warlock that he has, every demonic spirit that he has to come about you, that tried to kill you, that tried to take your life. It won't be long now before God elevates you to a place uh, where the, the, every demon is going to have to prepare a table before you and feed you what it is that God has for you. And, and I know, my brother, you can relate to the fact that in a basketball game, uh, you know, if you're about 15, you're 15 points up and there's about seven seconds left, 
uh, the, it's a championship game, and you know that once that time runs out, that the game will be over and you'll be able to put that number one finger up. Uh, and so what that team does now is as that time is ticking down, lets them know that it won't be long now That's right. That's before right. they're able to put that one finger up and say, we are the number one team right. in the country. And so you got to understand also, as I watch CNN, you'll, you'll, you'll find that uh, when they put somebody picture up, a fugitive or somebody that's on the run or most wanted person, uh, uh, and they consider him armed and dangerous, that's they'll right. know that the FBI and the DEA will let them know that it won't be long now before we capture them. That's right. Even in your senior times in school and as you go through your college midterms and, and you approach that time when it's graduation time, you'll understand that it won't be long now before you walk across that stage and they're calling your name for that diploma or that degree. And so you got to understand even with a farmer, when a farmer plants something, uh, he waits for his harvest. And after he plants it, he says with a smile, it won't be long now before my cucumbers and my tomatoes start to come right. up. Right. Because he knows that when he plants something in due season, I don't know who I'm talking to, somebody's been planting and sowing some seeds and you're waiting for your due time, but you gotta understand and encourage yourself that it won't be long now. That's right. I look at the pregnant woman in her ninth month, and as she sits in that labor, going through labor in the hospital, and I know some mothers out there can attest to the fact uh, that those pains, those, those contractions will hit you so hard. And all you want to hear is the doctor say it won't be long oh, now man. before you can push that baby out. You don't want to hear about nothing else. You don't care about what they're doing outside, what they're doing at the church. But that mama said, I need to get this baby up out of me yeah. because it's pain. But the doctor, when he comes in, they said, baby, it won't be long now. And I got some brothers. I grew up in Southeast, Southwest. And I understand that I have some, some of my friends who have been locked up, even on 23-hour lockdown. And, and, and as I write them and talk to them, they say, Mike, I don't need to hear nothing about no drug kingpin coming in here. I don't care who running this place. All I want to hear is that warden say it won't be long now, now. before right. my release date That's comes. Right. Hallelujah. And I get excited about that because it's a promise from God. And, and so if we look at this from a deductive connotation, you will discover that it won't be long now has an underlining uh, current right. to it. And so if you break it down, you look at the word it, and the word it means whatever you've been praying for. So I need to talk to some folk who've been praying, praying for, for some stuff. stuff. That's right. And so won't, the word won't is the deterrent to let the devil know he can't stop what God is doing. And then if you look at the word be, which means it, it will occur or it will happen at some point in your life. And long, the word long means time, time. Hallelujah. Now, now, it won't be long. Now is an adverb, which means present. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is God doing, he's working it out in time, and he's going to do it right, right now. now. Right. And so now the word kairos is an ancient Greek word meaning opportunity uh, or the season or the fitting time. Another Greek word, if you look at it, uh, for time is chronos. It's a sequence of moments expressed as chronos, emphasizing the duration of time. So there was an appointed time for John the Baptist to be born, which, mm -hmm. is, which is explained in Luke 1 and 20. The Lord promises to reward his servant at the proper time uh, in Luke 12 and 42. So each of these it uses a kairos, denotes a unique time in which something special is to happen. Uh, and so the devil is mad because he can only distract you uh, and make you believe that God won't deliver you because he knows he can't do nothing with time. Ah, yes, indeed. Yeah, God is the conduit of time. He is the alpha and the omega. And right. Pretty much he knows everything that's going to happen from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that you're going through, you got to understand and know that the promise is that it won't be long now before you get from your beginning to your end. But realize that God is in the midst yes. of your go through. Right. And so God knew that you would be born on a certain day, Right. And, and, and the time that you would be born, he knew the size that you would be born. He knew what your parents were going to name you. And a, after all that you're going through, all your infancy, your, your teenage years, your adult years, God knows it. And so not only does he knows that, and no matter what the doctor says about your death date, God knows the date that you're going to die. He knows how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Yeah, the doctor might tell you, oh, you're sick with cancer, or you got diabetes, and you're going to die on a certain date. No, they don't know. 
only God knows. And so those of us from, from D.C., especially us uh, uh, who hung out in the, in, the, in the clubs back in those 70s and 80s, uh, you'll understand that there was a band back in the day uh, called Rare Essence. And I like, I like the way they, they did a, 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 a response, a calling. And Little Benny and Funk, uh, uh, for those of us who knew them, uh, and if you went to the Howard Theater, you would call them R.E. or Essence. You know, and as we were there, you could hear the chime as, as the beat were going on. And, and, and Little Benny would get the mic and say, do you know what time it is? <laughs> Tell me, do you know? And then he would repeat that. And then he'd say, check your clock. <laughs> and then he would come back or Funk would get the mic and say, put your Gucci watch, watch on. on. And synchronize the time and let's rock. I, I see somebody on there got a flashback. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they remember when they were down at the magic room or something on the chapter three getting their groove on. All right, but see, what you got to understand, though, is that the Bible declares in Revelation 1 and 8 is that because God is the Alpha and Omega, he knows everything about you and the timing of things that will happen in your life. That's why I like Ecclesiastes 3. It says that there's a time to be born, That's right. a time to die, a time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to grieve, and a time to dance. And see, Abaca picked that thing up. He raised his hand and said, come on, Mike, you got to talk about me over here. <laughs> he said, but Abaca says, write the vision and make, make it plain. plain, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, uh, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, you got to wait for it. Yes, sir. And so we must be cognizant of the fact that time is used by God uh, to ordain your path to your destiny and purpose in life. And it's going to work out in time, but you got to go through the process. And that's where a lot of us give up because that process thing will put you in a predicament where you feel like throwing in a towel and giving up. But God says you're that close from your destiny and, and you've gone through too much to give up now. So you out here in the, with your paddle, with your boat out here in the middle of the ocean, and you talking about giving up? You mean to tell me after all that God has done for you, you ready to throw in the towel? Oh, no, you can't give up on God now. And so what you understand that oftentimes we shout on the manifestation of, of the things, but we don't shout on what God told you about the thing. So we as a people have to be keen enough to understand that we got to react on what we hear in God's word opposed to what we see. Walk by faith and not by sight. So how might I put it? You, you, you have to shout about what God's telling you or what he's going to bless you with. So if he says he's going to bless you with a husband or a wife, uh, don't wait till you get to the altar and put the ring on the finger to start shouting. No, you start shouting on the fact that God promised you that he was going to get you a husband or a wife. Yeah, you bless God uh, uh, before you sign the contract to get the house. If he, if he tells you he's going to bless you with a house, you go drive around in the neighborhood where you want to live. That's right. And then you start shouting on that street that you're going to get that house on instead of waiting to get the key and, and at closing start to shout. And see, we got to set our minds. And there's a shift going on. And God is saying that he wants you to be so sensitive to his word opposed to what you see. So you got to praise him in advance before you go to the car dealership. And it so happened we're in a car dealership. So don't wait till to, to, to you get here and you get the keys to the car. You shout on God saying, I'm going to bless you with the car. And so what you got to do is just give God praise in advance. in advance. I've learned that when you start giving God praise in advance, he'll, he'll back up that demon from trying to stop you uh, from getting what it is that God will have for you. So you can't tell everybody your dreams. My, my, my. and your visions my, my, my. because it's not time and they can't handle it uh, but just tell them it won't be long now yeah just tell them I'm driving my dad's old car now but it won't be long before I start driving my dream car yeah that drop top band sitting on 20s uh, you riding in coach now with Southwest Airlines but it won't be long now before you start riding in first class on your own private jet yeah you're eating in checkers and McDonald's now but it won't be long now before you're in a five-star uh, restaurant and you got the chef taking you back in the, in the room where he's showing you how he's cooking your food. Uh, yes, you got to tell him emphatically you might be a little sick in your body. Uh, it's aching with pain, but it won't be long now before you heal because you heard in God's word that he is the Alpha and the Omega and then Jehovah Rapha will heal your body. You might be going through hell on your job. But God wants to let you know that it's an indicator 
that God's getting ready to bless you with not only right. uh, uh, elevate you on your job, but maybe get you out of the job to start your own business. Amen. I don't know who I'm Amen. talking to in here. Somebody Amen. needs to just push past it. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Now, what we're going through, uh, uh, going to the next year, uh, what God was going to bless you with next year, what he said he's going to uh, expedite it. He's going to bless you in one year what you would have expected to get five years from now. So don't wait until you get it. I, but I dare somebody just to shout now, yeah, yeah. just to give God Anyhow. praise now. I hear you through the, through the radio. Hallelujah. Anyhow. So your haters uh, and your enemies uh, don't like what you have right now. They got a better house than you, better car than you, driving better than you, uh, blinging better than you. But you got to let them know that uh, once they see what you really going to get and the way God's going to bless you, it's going to blow their mind. Uh, but I'm in chapter 9, uh, verse 13. I won't be before you long, but I've been rolling with my man Amos. Amos jumped out of the Bible at me because uh, he, he's a brother uh, that I got acquainted with. And he woke me up about 2 a.m. in the morning, said, Mike, y'all been talking about Mark, Luke, Matthew, and John, and y'all ain't said nothing about Amos in the church, uh, so I need to tell my story. So allow me now, if you will, to exegete this pericope uh, from a hermeneutical perspective, then we'll go deeper, uh, and then we'll close out with a praise. Amen? Amen. And so what it is now, that Amos, he's a minor prophet, but with a major word for mm -hmm. Israel. And so the term major prophet and minor prophet are simply a way to divide the Old Testament prophet, uh, prophetic books. The major prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Uh, the minor prophets are Hosea, Joel, Amos, or Abadea, jo uh, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. But the major prophets are described as major because their books are no longer uh, are longer and the content is even broader than the minor prophets. But not saying that they had a, a major word or a better word, it was just that theirs was more broad, uh, whereas the minor prophets were more succinct and more to the point. And so everywhere you look, blessings are going to overtake you is what they were saying. But I don't know about y'all, but all I need is one, one blessing. blessing. That's what the word of God says. One blessing, and then they open up the heavens of the windows of heaven and allow that one blessing to come Flip. down will change your whole entire life. That's right. And so as you look at the illustration of these blessings that will overtake you, you look at a farmer and how that farmer plants things. And the way this word is described now is God is saying through Amos that it's going to give you so much so fast. As you're praying for something, God is not only going to answer the prayer that you're praying for, but he's going to bless you with the prayer that you haven't even prayed yet. So by the time you get to the next prayer, God would have already answered your prayer, moved on it behind the scenes, and then all you got to do is give him praise, praise and thank him in advance for what he just did. And so, and so you must be aware that the enemy is not going to sit back and just allow you to get blessed like, 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 like what you're getting because he's going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at you to stop you and make you uh, uh, disbelieve that God is and, what he, and will do what he said he's going to do. So if you're going through hell and it seems like you are being hit on every side, it's a red light indicating that your blessings are close and that you are about to get blessed beyond measure. So you can't give up now. And so the devil knows it's your time because he heard that the angels were dispatched to help you and he realizes that the blessings are going to come so fast. And so what you got to understand is the devil doesn't even have enough demons to stop the blessings from God. Because when he sends demons, you can ask Job. He, he tried to stop everything Job was doing, took everything from him. But what you must understand and realize is that at the end of all that, Job got double, double. for his trouble. And, and, and now God is saying, because you stood up to the devil, he's going to make the devil and his demon become your footstools. And he will make a millionaire that don't like you fund your project. He'll make that old, old crazy uh, 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 supervisor that you got on your job elevate you, even though they wrote you up with a bad mark. See, anybody can shout and bless God while everything is going well yes, sir. in your yes, life, sir. but God is looking for that child of God to bless him when you're going through a fiery furnace. Ah, yeah, is there anybody in, in, yes. on this broadcast or even in this room who is going through some stuff that got you ready to give up, but you know that even, even though it's tough, you got a praise that will back that demon up.
Yeah. Uh, the devil thought he had you when you lost your job, uh, when you got mo when you had money issues, you had relationship issues, and he thought he had you. But all of a sudden, you just woke up and got about your bed, and you just started to give God, God praise. praise. And all he had to do was to just step back off of you. And I look at it like this. I tell him, hey, you silly rabbit tricks are made for kids. So don't you even come here with that. And so you might have hit me with some good shots, uh, but it didn't kill me because I'm still here. That's the kind of boldness that we got to talk to that devil about. And if you get frustrated while you're waiting on God to move, uh, don't go postal, don't go shoot nobody, don't go cussing nobody out. Uh, just stand on the promises of God. And his, his promises is, are these. Here it is. It says, crying. if you're crying all night long, here's the scripture. Psalm 30 and 5 says, weeping man door for midnight, but joy is going to come in the morning. Now, if you want to kill some sins in your life, and y'all know we got some sins that just, just overtake us, be talking to us. And if you want to kill them, Brother James says in James 4 and 7, it says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And see, if you're feeling discouraged, I know some of us are discouraged, depressed. Galatians 6, 9, it says, let us not be weary in our well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. That means you can't give up. If you're having some financial issues, don't even worry about it. Because God says, I got it, because he spoke through in Philippians 4 and 19. says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Now, if you're a little fearful, uh, the promise is in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, said, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, uh, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And then if you're being attacked, uh, by weapons from the devil on every side. You just feel like he's just uh, attacking you, trying to kill you. Isaiah 54 and 17. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Come on, and, and as I close here, I want to challenge you, my brother and my sister. I want you to flip the script and tell the devil and let that joker know that I might not see it, but it be, won't be long now before I get it. And so you got to let him know that I might not have the car yet, but... I got a promise. I might not have the million dollars yet, but a promise is on the way. I might not have the new house, the new job, the scholarship, but I got a promise from God. I haven't started my business. My body may not be healed. I might not be married yet, but I got a promise from God. And so you got to understand that you got to put in your mind that if you can't run, you got to walk. And if you can't walk, you just got to crawl. But whatever it takes, you got to get to Jesus. And so God, uh, you got to let God know. And y'all excuse me for a minute. I got to go talk to my God on your behalf. And so God, while we're waiting on your process, this process called wait, don't let us give up and throw in the towel. While we're going through this process, don't let us lose our minds. And while we're going through this process, allow us to remember how you died on that cross for us. And while we are going through the process, bless us like you did the women with the issue of blood. Bless us like you did Joseph and how you took him from a pit to the palace. Bless us like you did Job and gave him double for his trouble. Bless us going through this process, God, so that we might, not, might know that your spirit is with us. And even how it was that when you died on the cross, we know that it wouldn't be long. Because you promised us in three days that you were going to get back up out of that grave. And we thank you, God, for not coming down off of that cross. Because we knew that it wouldn't be long before you came back and saved us with the blood that you shed on that cross for us. That's my time, and I thank you, and I God bless you, and I just want you to leave with you that it won't be long now, and if you can get that in your spirit and understand that God is not only in the beginning of your life, but he's in the ending of your life, and if you would just continue to give God praise and let him know that there is nothing that the devil can do to you that God doesn't already know about. God bless you. Amen. Hello? Hey, girl. Oh, what's wrong? Girl, I just went to a major dealership and got ripped off on a luxury car. Oh, well, I just got a great deal on a luxury car at Star Imports in Camp Springs, Maryland. They took their time with me, treated me with respect, and helped me find a perfect car. Hey, DMV, looking for a unique car buying experience? Tired of high-pressure sales? Good news at Star Imports. You'll be delighted with our boutique-style car buying experience. We're committed to treating you with the utmost respect, even if you have less than perfect 
perfect credit. Check out our impressive selection of pre-owned BMWs, Mercedes, Benz, Lexus, Jaguars, and other imports starting at $5,988. For fast online guaranteed credit approvals, go to starimports.com. That's S-T-A-R-R-I-M-P-O-R-T-S dot com. Or call 301-423-8000. Star Imports, home of the boutique-style car buying experience. Located in Camp Springs, Maryland, off exit 7B off the Beltway, next to Red Lobster. I heard you clearly. Clearly. Now I'm grateful. Grateful. It's part of my circumstance. All I want to do is serve you. And love you. Love you. And praise you. Praise you. You gave me another chance. Oh, we are back. My God. Doc. Come on, man. You 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 ain't got to hit me like that no, early just, on. Just sharing the good uh, news. On man. Saturday trying, morning, trying man. Somebody. It won't be long. No, it won't be long now. Now. That's it, man. We That's have, it. we've talked, um, and it's so ironic how God is doing this thing because from our first uh, airing uh-huh. to now, right. we've talked about waiting. Yeah. Or are yeah. yeah. being true. placed in a holding pattern. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then you come back and you say it won't be long now. Be long now. Yeah. What? Why do we as as believers mm-hmm. or just people in general right. always want it now? Now, that's right. That's right. We're we're basically uh, our society <coughs> is built on fast things, microwave. Uh, they want money now, quick money, and, and we've gotten to a place where uh, even as Christians, even as as children of God. You know, we pray something, we expect God to do it. Like, God, I want some water, and they expect the water just to show up like that, like mm-hmm. magic. Mm-hmm. God is not magic. God is a, a, a process-oriented God. Okay. You know, and, he, and what he does is shapes you and molds you. But if he gave you everything, what would tend to happen is, and we as a people had a tendency and a proclivity to, to not want to come to God now because they figure like they've been spoiled. Mm-hmm. So God takes you through a process where you got to fall down on your knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, for there is no other help. Yep. Because that process is, is straining you. It's making you, it's giving you faith and giving you wisdom. And what God is doing, he's like, well, well I'm going to have to put you in a waiting pattern mm-hmm. so that you can understand that the relationship I need with you is an isolated situation. You know, it's going to cause you to wait, but I don't want you to depend on man. I want you to depend on me. And, and, and that's the tendency that we have. And so once we understand that we have to go through this process, we'll understand the sensitivity of God and how it is that he's taking us through that process. You, you said something earlier that, that <coughs> struck a chord with me mm-hmm. when you started talking about time. Yeah. Uh, wow. uh, we need to understand that, that the Kronos mm-hmm. and the Kairos, mm-hmm. they wait on God. Yeah. Yeah. God sits outside of time. Exactly. And he orchestrates yeah. and tells time uh, what, what to, to do. do. Good God. Yeah, we we yes, you know, we uh we <laughs> because we we say okay, there's 24 hours in a day. Indeed, right. But we need to understand that that's on the humanistic the side. side. That's not on yeah, God's right. side. That's right. That's God right. can do whatever he chooses. Yes sir. But it was yes, so sir. powerful that you said <laughs> uh, talk to talk to mm-hmm. us a little bit about God's promises. Yeah. When, yeah. when he promises something, yeah. What? What? Yeah. Why do we like you just said a few minutes ago? We want it right now. Right. Now. Right. We don't want right. to wait. Right. On the promises, I'll right. go through the process. Right. Of getting the of promise. Getting the promise. That's right. And see, that what what promises are from God is that he he really wants you to not walk by sight. He wants you to walk by faith, and that promise is that he's going to give you a word that will promise you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That, that, that's a promise. So if you get down on yourself, you know that that word can build you up because it's a promise from God. But the disconnect is uh, uh, we as a people, we get caught up in that wait time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we don't hear the promises. All we do is we see what we're going through. I can't make my bills high, my money's low, uh, my children cutting up, my wife and my husband, they acting up. And so you're in this, this midst of this fiery furnace, and these promises that God's given you are like hitting your ear and going back out because you're looking at what you're dealing with. 
opposed to his promise. So that's why I was mentioning that you got to shout before, you got to praise God and shout before you see what you're going to get. You got to shout on the promises that he gives you. Amen. 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 We, uh, we are visual people. Absolutely. By nature, by nature, by by his construction, right, right, we are right. visual people. That's right, and and we want to see, see it, it yeah. as well as yeah. feel, feel it. it. That's it. That's it. But instead, we don't know, know it. it. Right, and that goes back to what you said about the word. Yeah, if, if yeah. we take God's word and we hide it in our, heart, our hearts, right, and we understand that mm -hmm. whenever God tells us, yeah. It, it, you can take it to the take bank. Take it to the bank. That's you it. can take it to the bank. That's it. His, yeah. his word will never yeah. come back void. Void. That's right. And when he sends it and out. And when he sends it out, yeah. it, it's going yeah. to accomplish his mission. Because his mission. That's right. You, you talked about That's local right. bands, uh, Rare oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, I had a flashback to you. And, and you, yeah. took, and you, took, us, you took us back down yeah. to, to the black hole. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> but yes, uh, you grew up in the DMV. Yes, sir. Uh, and mm -hmm. you are a, 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 a well-rounded, well-educated uh, Afro-American man. Yes. Sir. With all of the things that we have seen in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. uh, with the shootings, yeah. uh, with a, a lot of the killing, mm -hmm. uh, give me your thoughts on, on that. Uh, well, it, it's a time now where the, the devil and his demons have hit the panic button. He, he sees that God is shifting and doing great things for his people. Now he's saying we can't stop what God is doing. We That's can't right. go back in time. That's we can't right. stop the blessings that God has for you and I and everybody else. Right. So th this demonic force now is getting in inside of people like the killing in Florida. He gets inside of a spirit, gets inside of a young man, mm -hmm. takes a, a rifle and want to kill innocent children. Mm -hmm. Now, that that shows you that that's a spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. God wouldn't do that. That's right. So, and then when you see all the terroristic stuff that's going on, uh, starting, you know, and how they're uh, trying to do mass killings and all this is the demonic force. But what the devil realizes is that he know he can't beat God that's right. at anything. Right. But we have to believe that, and we gotta pray. I mean, we gotta go back to the old grandma days, the old church days, where we just lay on our face and pray for not only our families, but the families Family. around us, That's the right. schools, the kids, our government, uh, uh, everything that we are associated with. And so that uh, God will move through our prayers and we ought to bombard heaven. Uh, don't just say, oh, it, it happened, it's gonna happen, or whatever is gonna happen. No, you and I and all those who know to pray yeah. and know how to reach God, we really have to do that in a bold way. Amen. I, I was Amen. approached. Uh, I was approached by a coworker. Yeah. And I want to solicit this to you. Okay. He said, "Doc, let me ask you a question." I said, "Sure." Mm -hmm. What's that? He said, "What happens when I pray?" Right. And I don't and get don't an answer. answer. Good God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man. <clears throat> Goes back to Daniel. I like the story about Daniel. Okay. And that and that prayer. Daniel prayed. His answer it didn't come. Uh, uh, Gable couldn't handle it. And then God sent our angel Michael. Michael. I look at Michael being a gangster. <laughs> Michael said, where are you at? Where, 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 where needs to happen? <laughs> Michael goes down, boom, and makes it happen, gets that prayer through. Your prayers go up. And, and, and it's a, a timing thing. It goes back to that, that word timing. Mm -hmm. God knows what we need, how we need it, and when, when we, we need, need it. it, who to put in our lives to make things happen. But, I, uh, but what I would tell that brother, if I was talking to him, to not get discouraged. Because all of us, at some point, I'm talking from bishops on down, on down, have prayed for stuff that didn't happen and still hadn't happened as years go back. But we can't lose our confidence in God. We got to keep standing on his promises, keep standing on his word, and know that if God said no, we, it's not meant for us to have it. And, and that's what I stand on. Amen. 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 I hope you have all enjoyed this session. Um, awesome word, man. Man, man, I, I, pleasure, man. man. Appreciate man, you. Appreciate you, man. Inviting me out, man. I'll Love see you, you on the court, man. bro. And now, when man, I can get back I, in some shape, I'm still trying to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to turn this section over.
to the ladies who are right. dealing so closely <laughs> yeah. with another topic that That's good. needs prayer mm -hmm. and needs to be echoed out uh, dealing with That's domestic right. violence. Mm -hmm. um, domestic violence is very serious uh, in our world today. And as my good friend, uh, Rem Wingard stated, it's a spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a spirit right. that takes over this person or these persons mm -hmm. and causes them to attack one another and to hurt and harm uh, one another. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break and the ladies are going to come up and after they're done, uh, we're going to close out. Okay. We're going to let you close out with a word of prayer. All right. And we thank you so much. God bless you. And I hope we've bless been a blessing you. to you this morning. Amen. Love you. Love you. Praise you. I was broken. I was broken hearted. I fell down. Shadow heavy. Free me now. Things you know I've been through Sing Miranda Made me Gave me Strength that I can endure In the secret place I'm dwelling In the secret place I'm dwelling Safely Safely Ever so bravely Your foundation, foundation standeth sure, stand it sure. giving us a little show oh. but um hello y'all we back we just started but we was on a two-week vacation <laughs> <laughs> um okay but we 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 back we we were just having a little fun over here but let's get down to business you ready to get down to hey let's do this okay so we're back to talk about uh domestic violence again because it seems that it's it, it's getting uh, more deadlier, I want to say, if that's a good word. Um, so, what do you do after you got out of domestic situation? What do you tell yourself while you're in a relationship? Is it okay as long as it does not come back to the home? Stop making them angry. What are you doing to make them angry? They are the best you can get. Don't want to start over. Mm. Will you never get you would never get no one better than me. I've heard that one before plenty of times. <laughs> okay. You will find no one who loves you like I do. I heard that one too. Cuss you out as soon as you walk through the door because you did not bring something home. So, how do you feel when coming out of domestic violence? Uh, mental and spiritual scars run deep. What is mental and spiritual scars? I'm going to let Felicia answer that one. Ahead. So how do you feel when you're coming out of domestic violence? Many, many women and men may feel ashamed, 
They may feel anger. They may be hurt. They may feel betrayal. And just because you feel these things does not mean that you stop moving on with life. It does not mean, well, maybe I just need to hide myself, run away from people, and uh, sometimes I forget. But you seclude. Sometimes you seclude yourself. And you don't want to do that because then you'll start, uh, your self-esteem will start to go down. You'll start thinking about suicide. You'll start thinking about, well, I can't move on with life. And things will you'll really fall apart. And you don't want to fall apart. You want to keep moving. And that brings about a mental and spiritual scars. And they run deep. The, what mental and spiritual scars are, words or actions of others, and sometimes ourselves, that result from a trauma. Trauma could be a fight. Trauma could be um, someone really just talking badly about you and say that they love you. Trauma could be somebody just beating you up just because um, they had a bad day and they don't know how to handle what they're going through. So how do we recover from those mental and spiritual injuries? Some people, I mean, well, some recoveries are longer than others. That's true. Especially if you're not um, around um, positive people, or mm -hmm. spiritual people, or if you're not affiliated with a church or something like that. Some people um, don't know how to pray. You well, know. the other thing is that you may not have support of families because they may side with the right. person that's abusing you. Right. That's why they always say, well, I ain't going to say that. Let me say this. Some people like to keep a uh, family secret a secret. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um things that are happening behind closed doors. Yeah, but you can't do that, especially if, if someone is getting hurt or being violated. Uh, you can't keep that a secret because, you know, then that's, that comes to, well, um, being judged. Because, you know, I mean, some of my situations, I was being judged. That's why I don't talk to a lot of my families about it. I talk to some about some things, but not a lot because, uh, the first person to, to sell you out is your family. So you need to find someone you can talk to. Like one of my cousins, I told her, I think I talked to her yesterday, um, yesterday or the day before yesterday, and um, she texted me. She said, um, are, are you okay? How you doing? I haven't spoken with you. And I said, I was just thinking about you. Like, and she said, she made a little joke. I hope it's good. And I said, yeah, it was good. I said, because I want to commend you on when we were growing up, started having our own children, you know, when I was going with the abuse, going through the abuse with, with my ex, my husbands, and all that stuff. My husbands, that don't even sound right. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> my husband. So, and I told her, and I said, I just want to thank you because when I talk to you or have a conversation with you, you never judge me. Now, one time, she never judged me. She never said, well, why you doing this? And why you doing that? What you doing that for? And what you doing that for? The only thing she said was, Kim, as long as you are happy, I'm happy for you. I'm there for you. But she never said, why, 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 why? Now, when she found out I was going through the abuse, she was ready to go to jail. I'm going to say that right now. Because she, she's, she's my favorite cousin, and I love her for that. So you, you got to find somebody that um, willing to sit down with you and help you heal from your scars. If you don't have that, then you need to get on your knees. Yeah. And if you can't get on your knees, I don't know what else to tell you. Well, they can also get professional help. Yeah, but what if they don't want the professional help? Some people well. don't want the professional help because they feel as though they're being judged as well. You know, I've heard that too, so. Not everybody. Prayer does work. 
It Don't does. get me wrong. Sometimes prayer hooked up with professional help. And you have to be selective with your professional help. You got to talk to the person. You got to be able to um, hear what they're saying when they're talking to you to see if they are able to help you. And if they're not able to help you, then you move on to the next person that's able to help you professionally. True. And don't go to nobody you know. Don't. You need to go to somebody that don't know you. Don't go to nobody you know. Well, that may be a good thing. That may be a bad thing. If you go to somebody you know, they may be able to help work you through what you're going through. But if they're not encouraging, if they're not uplifting, then yes, you need to go somewhere else. Find somebody you can trust. Trust is good. Yes, I can say that. Find somebody you can trust. So. so, here's a couple of things that you can do to recover. Look at the trauma from a different perspective. That's one way. Look at what you need to do to stay away from the situation. Kind of look at what what actions you took and what actions they took. When you see the signs, know how to react. Don't just let it happen. Mm -hmm. Do something about it. You know what you experienced before? Avoid it. Cut it off at the head. Do something different. But don't walk back into that situation. Don't repeat that, that wheel. And if you find yourself walking back into that situation, you got to get yourself out. And it's good when you have friends that you can trust because if you're going through the same thing and your friends were there when you were going through it, they can help you. What's the right word? I want to say admit, uh, say to yourself, recognize help you recognize that you're going through the same situation again. And we need to ta start working on recovery, changing your situation. But some females, that's all they know. It doesn't have to necessarily be a female. It doesn't. It could be a male. Some of us do have male friends. And make sure that when you have your male friends and your female friends that you have boundaries. And each one know what those boundaries are. When they cross those boundaries, it's time to make a change. It's time to love from a distance. A long distance. <laughs> Very long. Go ahead. So now, you also ask yourself, did you forgive the person? Yes. <laughs> well, you know, you have to forgive the person, not to for move, them, but, but for, for you. yourself. Yes. Because they, they move on with life. You're not moving on with life. You're concerned about what they're doing, why they're not suffering, why they're not paying for what they've done. You can't move on like that. You're stuck. You okay. got other things you want to do. I mean, I had to forgive. To I had to. Of course. Because, well, it's in me. My sister always said I'm soft anyway because I, I can forgive the devil. Oh. You know, that's what she <laughs> said. I always forgive people. I mean, but you have to. You have to move on because... You know, moving on and forgiving a person would ease it a little bit. Some people don't know how to forgive, but it would it would take a lot off of you when you forgive. Yes. And you're see, able. they sleeping at night. Yes, you they not, are. Because you holding grudges. Yes. And you know, it's not good to hold grudges. Because then you get sick. Yeah, depressed. You start wasting away. Losing your hair. Yeah, losing a lot of weight. Eating, uh, eating a lot. Well, that too. <laughs> and then you'll get a, uh, uh, health issues. Yeah. And health issues you want to weigh on your body. 14th Street Bridge. <laughs> so oh, for, forgive, y'all. Yes. Just forgive. Make it easy on yourself. And... How long do you take to forgive someone? It took me a minute. It took me a, a, a pretty good while. I'm a, I'm a, I did say that. I'm gonna say that it took me. It took me a long time um, to forgive. Cause in the beginning, I had to learn 
how to forgive. Okay. I didn't know how to forgive. Okay. You know, um, but it's it took me a long time okay. to forgive, but I, I had to do it. I mean, I feel so much better, you know, um, when I forgave and them or anybody else that did something to me. And so you know, better. with forgiving, you're able to move on. You're able to go into new experiences. You're able to go into new situations. You're able to uh, smile more. Smile more. You're able to move more. You're able to uh, work with other people more. So you're able to do more as you forgive. And I would suggest that you, I want to say mourn the situation and then move forward. Bury it. Hey. That's what I want to say, bury it. Mourn the situation. Put dirt on it. Forgive them and let's move on. You don't have anything else? <laughs> <laughs> so how do, you, else? How, do you, how do you recover? How do you recover from this injury? And you can recover, you just have to be willing to recover. Yeah. You draw closer to God. You try, your, you try hard not to repeat your actions that got you into the situation. And you also try to help others who are also going through the same situation. You may run into people that may not be ready to change the situation. And a lot of people are not ready to change. They're not. So you either continue to encourage until they're ready, or you try and get them help, professional help. But what if they don't take the help? Well, if they don't take the help, you, you can pray for them. Yeah, at least you say you can. You try, and you try to stay in contact to, and, and continue to try and encourage them. Um, how how the old saying going? You can lead a well to the to, to the, the water. The horse to, to the, the water. water. <laughs> How but you, you can't go? make a, exactly. Lead the the horse to the water, but you can't make. Well, drink. you can put a bucket in front of them. You can't make a drink. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> what happens after you experience domestic violence? You have to pick yourself up. You have to change your mindset. You have to change how you look at that situation. And if you don't do these things, you'll stay in the situation. And that situation can destroy you. So, I just wanna put this out here. Domestic violence and recovery, three stages. You have the situation as you're going through the situation. You have recovery, which is changing your situation. And you must proceed with, with your, life. your life. Proceeding with your life is learning more about you, learning about boundaries. That's going back learning, to learning, loving yourself. Loving yourself. Learning about what you want, what you don't want, what's going to make you move forward in life, what's going to hold you back, what's going to hold you into that, that, that situation. So you have to learn boundaries. And if somebody crossed those boundaries, you got to move back. You got to move away. You got to step away. You learn from a distance. So, well, we'd like to thank you all again for listening to us. We hope um, this um, message or topic helps someone. Uh, we're going to take a quick ba break. Break. <laughs> break. We're going to take a quick break and come back and close out the show. <laughs> blessing right now. Applaud God in this room, everybody. some glory in advance. Clap your hands again. Woo! I'm 
I'm so glad today I heard you. I'm so glad today I heard you. I heard you clearly. Clearly. Now I'm grateful. Grateful. It's part of my circumstance. We are so thankful for the message that you ladies have brought forth dealing with domestic violence. Domestic violence is not acceptable um, at all by any means. Uh, if you're in a situation like that, please call 911. Call the radio station, 240-719-2560. Call somebody, your local church, uh, minister in your church, uh, somebody, because, again, domestic violence is not acceptable. And we want you to live. We want you to be, we want you to, to see your children grow up and go to college and, and be great men and women that God has designed for them to be. In closing, we thank you again for joining us. We hope and we pray that something that we have said has struck a chord in your life that makes you say, what must I do this day to be saved? And if you don't have a church home, the Master's Touch Praise Ministry, the Temple of Praise, uh, we have many connections with many churches. We'll be happy to help you uh, get to a church. In closing, I'm going to have my good friend close us out in a word of prayer. Father, we do thank you for this great and awesome day that you've made. We're rejoicing and we're glad about it. We ask God that you continue to bless all of us who was on the radio show today, those who were listening, uh, this radio and streaming faith uh, system here that they're running. We ask that you continue to bless it and those who come forth. We thank you, God, for domestic violence and how it is that you're going to be able to be a blessing to those who are involved in that, God. Eliminate anything that the demons are trying to do to try to kill our, our relationships. And so we thank you in Jesus' name for all that you've done and, and going to do. We thank you in advance. In Jesus' name. Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 And that's Amen. a wrap. <laughs> all the things you've not been through. Sing Miranda. Made me. Gave me strength that I can endure. In the secret place I'm dwelling. In the secret place I'm dwelling. Safely. Safely. Ever so bravely. Your foundation, your foundation standeth, standeth sure. Standeth sure. I was brave.